and welcome to another season of Scribes and Songsters here on Your TV. I'm Veronique Mandel. I look forward to introducing you to many more of the talented writers who live in our region. But not only the writers, we'll talk to the important people who help writers by either publishing their books, selling their books, and who do that all-important marketing. Today we've taken the show out of the studio, and I'm delighted to be here at the Biblioasis bookstore on Wyandotte Street in Windsor. It's one of the few independent bookstores in Windsor and Essex County, and we'll find out how it's managed to survive and grow from owner Dan Wells. We'll also hear from two very talented local singer-songwriters. But first, I could tell you lots of things about Dan Wells, and all of them good, but I'd rather let Dan do most of the talking. Welcome to Scribes and Songsters. Well, thank you for having me. So, now listen, I know that you've had a very long trip to be here. Yes. How was Europe? Yeah, it was great. Um, I was part of a Canadian uh, trade delegation for publishing because Canada is the guest of honor uh, for Frankfurt 2020. So they sent 25 publishers over there to meet German publishers and to try to sell Canadian books into that market. So it was a really great experience. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. And jet lag? Very much so, yeah. 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 I think it's about one o'clock, two o'clock by, <laughs> by my internal clock. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time oh, to do this. Yeah, thank you very much. So why did you um, get into um, books, being a bookstore owner? Uh, I, I just always wanted to do something with books. I always assumed it would be as a writer. I mean, you know, uh, and, and that still may be something that happens down the road. But uh, I've always had books in the blood. And I figured I could never get anyone to hire me. Uh, <laughs> so you try to work at a library. That didn't work. You try to work at South Shore Books when you come to the University of uh, Windsor. And, and they didn't want me. So, you know, uh, eventually... Did you feel rejected? I did. A little bit. <laughs> I did. So I thought that, uh, you know, I, I, I could get this out of my system and, and, and open up my own bookshop and uh, everybody told me it likely fail my mother said it would fail and I figured <laughs> after that I'd just kind of go on and uh, I, I'd have that in my past and and do you know a, a master's or a PhD in something mm -hmm. but uh, you did it in downtown Windsor you did yeah yeah so tell me about that what was it like well, uh, I think we opened up about 20 years ago, maybe last week. So this is the 20th anniversary for the bookshop. Uh, and I, I said this in publishing. I think it was the same for the bookstore. It was sort of an act of ignorant enthusiasm. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, so uh, I just assumed... I actually thought opening a bookshop would be a really great way to be a writer. You know, you just line the shelves with books. Occasionally people would come in and otherwise, you know, you'd have time to read, you'd have time to write. And after about six months, I clued in that that is just not a way to survive. Uh, and you had to put your, you know, your back into it. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it is that independent bookstores started to decline and have they seen a resurgence? I mean, uh, there's a lot of factors that have gone into that. I mean, part of it is chapters. It's sort of the conglomerates or the larger chains moving in and uh, undercutting, uh, which we've seen both as booksellers and publishers, mm -hmm. which gives us a, a different perspective. I think part of it is the rise of Amazon and online retail, which is sort of decimating independent retail everywhere and, and the big box stores. So I think, unfortunately, you know, around late 1990s, there was sort of a, a perfect storm of forces which which made it harder for bookstores to survive. I mean, book selling has always been, publishing has always been a very small margin, narrow margin business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you have to be committed to it. Uh, and I think there was sort of a changing of the guard where people couldn't survive and, and, and you know, a few of us hung on. We are seeing in the U.S. right now a tremendous resurgence in independent bookstores where, where a lot of the chains are starting to contract. Who comes to your bookstore? You know, what, who are your customers? Well, I'm, I think that uh, that has changed a bit from uh, when I was on a lat. Um, but, it, but it's everybody. I mean, some of my favorite customers uh, over the time have been taxi drivers and security guards as mm -hmm. much as university professors. And I'd say the biggest book collectors we've had have been sort of, you know, the people that you wouldn't expect. 
Um, so, you know, our customer base, I think, very much reflects, uh, you know, it's factory workers and professionals, and, and it, 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 it reflects the, you know, the wide range or, or the demographics of the city. What do you think it is that attracts people to an independent bookstore? What is it that you can offer that perhaps is uh, a bit different? I mean, I think this has changed a bit over time too. I mean, we've always been able to provide maybe personalized service or we've been able to provide, you know, maybe a, 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 a better sense of what a given community or neighborhood wants. So, I mean, that's always been sort of a touchstone of independent retail. I mean, it's getting to the point, um, you know, I mean, Amazon has changed their model uh, and it's getting to the point that some we can actually often now provide books cheaper. Not all of them, but mm -hmm. some of them. Uh, and, and sometimes even faster. So uh, it, it really depends on this. I don't know if I'm answering the question well enough, but it, it depends yes. on the situation. Mm -hmm. You also are very supportive of local writers. Yes, I think that that's something that we, I mean, both as publishers, but as booksellers, we have to provide a, a venue for, for all local writers. I mean, um, uh, no matter where they come from. Yeah. And is that something your customers appreciate? I think so, is yeah. No, I mean, the local market... I, I, Windsorites, I think, are more supportive of local writers than almost any city uh, I'm aware of. You know, I mean, when um, I talk to people from Hamilton or Ottawa or Toronto or Vancouver, you know, I don't think that they have the same appreciation or, the, or they support their writers in the same way that people from Windsor often do. Mm -hmm. um, we're very lucky that way. Absolutely. There are so many uh, very talented yeah. writers in the region, and it's it's always so important when you feel you're supported by your community. Yeah, and, I, and you know, that seems to be the case. Yeah. And they really, I mean, one of the most wonderful things about Windsor and Windsorites is they they appreciate their own history and their own story, and and the fact that people are willing. You know, for a very long time, communities like Windsor did not have the opportunity to tell their story. And the fact that there is this sort of burgeoning of, of local historians and writers and uh, poets who are, are capturing Windsor uh, for Windsorites, I think they've, they've really definitely got behind that as a project. Do you get much of an opportunity to read? I read as part of my job all the time. Yeah. Uh, there is a big difference between... Um, when I was a bookseller and just a bookseller, mm -hmm. I think I read incredibly widely. I'd read 125, 150 books a year. I knew everything that was coming out. Uh, I find, and I didn't expect this, that as a publisher, my reading outside of what we're working on has become constricted. So I... I, I Every time I pick up a book for pleasure, I, I'm reminded of the fact that there's three or four hundred manuscripts waiting for me. So reading has been, become obligatory. Um, and as a result, I, I think I've got a far less sense of what other people are doing. It's, it's been an unintended consequence. You know, I think that is also something that befalls writers. I think so too. Yeah. Because I find when I'm working on a book, if I pick up another book to read, I feel guilty that I'm yeah. not working on the book. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's very similar. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we have these obligations to the, I mean, whether it be, in my case, to the writers in their books, or in your case, to your own project. And, and it, it makes it harder to sort of, you know, uh, be as promiscuous as maybe we used to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> What's the best thing about being in the book business? Huh. Well, there's a lot of things. I mean, I, I think that I get to work with incredible people. I would say that that's the main thing. Um, I feel very lucky to work. I, I think I work with some of the best writers, not only in Canada, but around the world. We, ju we just hired this German writer I met in Berlin on Friday, Thomas Mella, uh, who, who's got a great memoir of bipolar disorder. And I mean, we spent an evening, had a wonderful conversation. This is going to be an incredibly powerful book we'll bring into English for the first time. I'd never have that opportunity. And I think it, it, being able to engage with people like that on a daily basis is one of the, the great gifts of working in books. If you were to tell me one of the most challenging, what it would be? One of the most challenging. Challenging things about being in the book business. Uh, keeping afloat. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, I mean, there's a few things. I mean, keeping afloat is certainly one of them. It's a very mm. narrow, as I said already, margin business. Um, so, so balancing sort of the, the aesthetic and literary concerns that you, you got into it for with the practical considerations of keeping the doors open is, is, is a tough thing. Also, which is sort of ironic considering publishers are supposed to be communicators, I think it's also explaining what we do and why what we do is valuable. Um, even among writers, very often, they're not 100% sure what publishing actually mm -hmm. involves. Um, and, and that's something we, we have to work at as well. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about the publishing end uh, of your business, uh, but we're going to take a short musical break and uh, we'll come back. Okay. We're very pleased now to present two very talented musicians, Carrie Lynn Hewitt and Roger Hewitt, who presently reside in Leamington. Roger was born in Norwich, England, and he's toured for many years with Cirque du Soleil as one of their musical directors. Carrie Lynn is also an exceptional singer-songwriter, and in the video we're about to show you, Carrie sings Good Night, Good Night, accompanied by Roger on keyboard. The song Good Night, Good Night was co-written by Leamington resident Bacchus Saba and former Windsor resident Martin Wall. Carrie and Roger are also accompanied by three other local musicians, Chris Lajoie on cello, Ed Everard on guitar, and John Morgan on bass. Here now is Carrie Lynn and Roger Hewitt with Good Night, Good Night. Everything that 
that was wrong will be Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, the music that was local musicians Kerry and Roger Hewitt. Scribes and Songsters is on the road today. We're at the Biblioasis bookstore on Wyandotte Street in Windsor. My guest is owner Dan Wells. So we were talking about your uh, uh, start in the, the bookstore business. Mm -hmm. Now, after you closed the store on... Mm -hmm. Did you go directly into publishing before you actually set up here on Wyandotte Street? Yeah, publishing started uh, actually before we closed. Um, we opened the bookstore in 1998 and we stayed there until about 2008 on Ouellette. Um, publishing began in 2004, so we'd, we'd kind of been doing both out of, out of that uh, Oled mm -hmm. address uh, for about four years. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, the, the factors that led to us closing the bookshop were, I mean, there was, it was 2008, there was a recession, mm -hmm. but we also had a, a Toronto landlord who came in and made things somewhat difficult. So, so you know, at that, time, you more rent. <laughs> at that time, it felt like, you know, this was a natural transition. Yeah. yeah. And so... Tell me about getting into the publishing business. Does you know? Does one wake up one morning and say, "I think I'll be a publisher"? No, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't. I I have talked to many publishers since I I got into this, and I've never met one who ever said, "When I grow up, I want to be a publisher." I mean, it's just not one of those jobs. Yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, I think I think it's an accidental profession. Um, it's something that I got into. Uh, I mean, largely because it seemed like. Well, uh, if I step back a bit, uh, there was another bookseller back then, Ann Beer, who had a bookstore called Book Room at the Court. Right, I remember. And she had an idea in about 2000 to start a literary festival, and she invited all the booksellers at that time uh, and, and other literary people to be involved, so I joined that. Uh, this is what became Bookfest Windsor, which is still ongoing. Right. And I ran that for a few years, so it gave me sort of a taste for literary promotion. And, and uh, I was also doing some bookbinding at the time, and I was getting tired of making blank notebooks and I had a wonderful poet who came to my shop, Salvatore Alla. Uh, and we just started talking and I decided maybe we would do a chat book um, uh, of his and it just kind of progressed naturally from there. How difficult is it to get started? Do you, do you need a, a, an amount of money? You know, like people say, well, to start a business, you need seed money, you know, or, or do you just take money out of your own pocket to start it? Uh, we took money out of our own po pocket. Yeah. And I mean, in the early days, the publishing company was very much supported by the bookshop. Mm -hmm. So it started small uh, with us doing chat books and, and that trade book of Sal Alice. Uh, um, and, and, you know, the fact that we were able to directly sell them meant that our profit margin was much higher. Mm -hmm. But I, I just loved being part of, you know, the, the editorial and the decision making, the design and the marketing. I mean, all aspects of that excited me. And, and, and once I did it once, I just wanted, you know, with enthusiasm to kind of take it as far as I could. Uh, and, it, and it went from there. But yeah, you, you do need money. Yeah. Um, when I first decided, and I've told this story a few times, but when I first decided to become a publisher, I, I went to a history prof at the University of Windsor, who was one of the leading scholars of British publishing, and I told her what I was going to do. And she said that I couldn't be a publisher because I didn't have any money, and I didn't know what I was doing, and mainly because I came from Windsor, and, and no publishing program of any merit had come from a place like this historically. Did that really set you off? It did. Um, I, you know, put a lot of steel in my spine for many years, but, you know, she was also totally right. 
Uh, and, and this is again why I said that was an act of ignorant enthusiasm. Um, uh, and, but that enthusiasm, that ignorance carried me through. How many writers have you published so far? Boy, uh, I think we're over 250 books in the 14 years we've published. That's extraordinary. Yeah, it's, we're doing about 30 a year, uh, which makes us now one of the largest independents in the country. I, my guess is probably around 150 writers, yeah. maybe a few more. Do you, have you settled on a genre or is it eclectic? I think it's pretty eclectic and I think that's one of the things I'm, I'm proudest about the list is that it can contain such a diversity of voices and styles. Um, you know, we have a range of imprints. I mean, we're known as the press for the short story. We do more short fiction than almost any press in North America. We, we publish a translation series that has brought writers into English from, from Angola and Mozambique and Central Europe and Latin America. Um, we publish criticism, experimental fiction, regional history. So, you know, it's a, it's a very wide-ranging list. And you're winning awards. We've been we've been very lucky the last so tell while. Tell us, brag a bit. Okay. <laughs> what would you like to know? <laughs> tell me about the about the uh, awards list. The um, because okay. your writers have been on some very prestigious. We've we've been lists. we've been pretty lucky. I mean, uh, since 2015, I think we've had eight or nine Giller nominations. We haven't, or our authors haven't won that, but that, I think that would be the most any independent press outside of a Nancy's had. We've won two Governor General's Awards. Uh, we've, we just won the Trillium Award for Poetry. We've won the Trillium Award for Fiction, uh, which is the, the award the province gives. Uh, we've had uh, some Frank O'Connor award winners who are, you know, uh, it's an inter international prize for the best short story collection. One of our writers was up for the International Booker. So we've, we've had a really good, good run really over the last three, four years. What says to you, this is good? You know, there was a manuscript I didn't get a few weeks ago. Uh, I'd love this book, um, where he was quoting a French painter who said something like, to declare something as beautiful as an act of faith. And I, I think that that is, in the end, uh, I mean, uh, I work with great people. I work with a phenomenal, one of the best editors in the country, in John Metcalf, who has done more to shape Canadian literature, perhaps more th than almost anybody in the country. And there, there are a range of other editors I work with. And I think we all just have to trust our gut. I mean, for me, it, I, I, it, I feel committed to something when I, when I, when I almost have a physical response to a text. Um, uh, it can be about language, it can be about uh, meaning, it can be about a range of things. Um, it's really kind of hard to pin down. Do you have a favorite genre? I love short stories. I mean, I love essays. I love shorter forms. Um, I really like shorter forms now because I, I don't have to commit to them, right? I can dip in and out. Yeah. Um, uh, but I would say that the short, sto short stories, essays, and translations always been central to, to me since I was a kid. I, I only, unfortunately, speak and read English. Uh, and this is a way that I have access to the world. Um, so I think it's one of the best things we do in Canada. How many authors do you have in the queue? Oh, we have about 30 a year, and we're, we're already geared up through most of 2020. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd say we probably have committed to another 50 or 60 books at this point. Yeah. So for a writer, how long does it take from, let's say, you decide that you would like this book? Okay. Um, from that moment to actually having a physical book? It could depend entirely on the situation. Often you're looking at 18 to 24 months. I mean, we need a minimum. It depends how much editorial work a book needs. Uh, it depends the nature of the genre. Uh, are we aiming for a U.S. market or a Canadian market? Because they are different things and we have different books for different markets. Um, uh, let me see here. We... It, de it depends on uh, how much publicity groundwork we can lay for something. Mm -hmm. But I think, generally speaking, between 12 and 24 months is, is, is reasonable. Do authors make money? Some do. Yeah. Some do. Uh, it's very few writers in Canada m make enough money to live 
solely by the writing. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are other ways that they can make money as writers. They can teach, you know, and, and, and several of our writers have received, you know, permanent contracts because of their, 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 their books. Uh, there are grants and other ways that they can, they can access uh, income mm -hmm. so that they can work on what they do. But, but the number of writers in Canada who can live solely by their writing, you could probably count on one or two hands. Is that generally the case? Um, I mean, unless you're, uh, you know... Uh, Harry Potter's mother. <laughs> it's always been that way. I mean, you know, uh, Trollope used to work as, I think he worked as a banker, you know, and used to write on the train. T.S. Eliot was a banker. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, most writers have had to have a day job. Uh, I, I'd say it's always been, they've always had to have the day job or they came from positions of privilege where they didn't have to work anyway. Uh, so I think the writer who could survive solely on his writing, or his or her writing, has always been the exception to the rule. What advice do you have for writers? Well, uh, generally I would say that they should read. Uh, I think reading is... Um, I mean, that's really how you kind of discover what is possible. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how you educate yourself. It's also how you become a member of a community, right? I mean, if you're not reading other people's works, it's, 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 it's ridiculous to assume other people will, will do the same for you. Um, so I think reading is essential and sticking to it. I mean, uh, writing is, as you know, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of time uh, and, and, and you have to be willing to put it in. You have to be very committed for a lot of years. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. And, and, you know, the pleasures of, uh, of that kind of commitment, I think, are, are, are pretty evident and wonderful. Yeah. Um, but it isn't, in very few cases, are there overnight sensations. Yeah. Very briefly, would you recommend writers get agents? <laughs> I'd say, it, again, it would depend on the book. Uh, overall, uh, for most of the writers we would work with, I don't think agents make a huge difference. And publishers, if they're doing their job well, are agents in the sense of, I mean, that's what I was doing in Germany, is we're trying to sell rights into foreign territories. Um, but but um, it depends how comfortable they are dealing with the sort of economic and practical side of the business. Some writers would rather not. So they have to know themselves. This has been wonderful. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, time certainly flies when you start talking about books. And I want to thank Dan Wells so much for hosting us here today at Biblioasis. Best of luck. Thank you very much, and you too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure we'll be talking all again. Right. Well, that's all for Scribes and Songsters for this edition. Join me again. I look forward to it. I'm Veronique Mandel. Turn off the light. Tomorrow the sun will shine bright And everything that was wrong will be